let's talk about the intermediate value theorem. Now, the way I think about intermediate value theorem is in between. So we're going to be talking about a value between a certain interval. That's what the intermediate value theorem involves. Notice it does not in, it does not involve derivatives, but it does involve continuity, like we talked about with the extreme value theorem. So this is another theorem that doesn't technically involve derivatives, but it does involve continuity. So here's what I want you to look at. We have a certain graph here. We can see it ranges from 0 to 4. And that's going to be our first actual question. What is the horizontal interval of this function? So whenever you're talking about the intermediate value theorem, you need to consider what its horizontal interval is. In this case, it's 0 to 4. Next thing you want to consider is its vertical interval. And thinking about this visually, I think, really helps in terms of the intermediate value theorem. Now, the vertical interval doesn't necessarily mean its range. We can see this goes from 0 to 3. We just mean the difference between the first y value of this point, the y value of this point, and the y value of the last point. So that's why you want to consider your horizontal interval first. It goes from 0 to 4, and those two y values are 0 to 2. So its vertical interval in terms of its endpoints is 0 to 2. And that's really important that you distinguish that from its actual range. Next, we want to pick a number within the vertical interval of f of x. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you can pick any number. Any You want to pick any number within the vertical interval. I picked 1 because it's halfway between. And what is that? What you can do is you can draw a line from that y value you picked until you hit the graph and then go down. Okay? And then you will go down and figure out what that x value is. In this case, the number within the horizontal interval corresponding to this number is 0.6. So we've basically hit a value that's between a horizontal interval, 0 and 4, based on the y value we picked. All right, so what does that mean? The intermediate value theorem states that you can pick any number within the vertical interval, so we could have picked you know, 1.5 or 0.5, of a continuous function, and you are guaranteed to land on the function itself. That's the first guarantee. As long as you draw a line over this way, you will hit the graph no matter what. Okay, and there will be a corresponding x value. So the second part of that is once you go over, then you can go down and guarantee that there will be an x value corresponding to that point. And that's the intermediate value theorem. And it's actually pretty much common sense, especially when you look at the graph of the function. Now let's take a look at where this might not work. Here we have a graph. The horizontal interval, interval is 0 to 5. The vertical inter interval goes from 0 to 3, the y value of this endpoint. Now, for a lot of these uh, y values, it will work. We pick 1.5 and go over and go down. We'll have a corresponding x value. Okay. Um, however, let's try 2.5. If we try to go over, we will not hit the graph. So there will be no corresponding x value for y, uh, y equals 2.5. Why? Because there's a break in this graph. It's not continuous. So this illustrates the function has to be continuous in order for the intermediate value theorem to apply. Let's read the theorem together. If f of x is continuous on a closed interval, so just like our extreme value theorem has to be closed, and f of a is not equal to f of b, now, what does that mean? That means that the two y values um, for, for a horizontal interval aren't the same. So, in other words, f of 0, in this case, doesn't equal f of 5. All right. Then, for any chosen y value between f of a and f of b, there exists at least one c value within a, b, such that f of c equals y. Now, that's a lot to take in. Going back to our um, original example, uh, the y value that we chose was 1. Okay, The c value that we got was 0.6. So this guarantees that f of 0.6, f, f of c, 0.6, will give us 1 back. So it's kind of a reverse theorem. You're, you're choosing a y value, and it guarantees there's a c value that exists, provided that we're on a closed interval and the function is continuous. practical example involves height. Let's say a person is 5 feet when they are 12 years old. 
And by the time they're 15, they're six feet tall. The intermediate value theorem would guarantee that at some point in time between the fact that they were 12 and the fact that they will, uh, grew to be six feet tall, some point between that time, maybe they're 13 or 14, they were five and a half feet tall. So it makes sense, right? I mean, your growth as a human is continuous, right? And at some point in that time, between when they were five and six feet tall, at some point they were five and a half feet tall. So this is a good way of thinking about the intermediate value theorem. In other words, somebody else could have chosen, let's say, five feet eight inches, and there's guaranteed that at some point in time, at some age, they were five feet eight inches. So that's kind of a, a practical illustration of the intermediate value theorem. An intermediate value theorem is an existence theorem. Notice there is a guaranteed existence of a value C, such as f of C equals Y, but there is no guarantee that the value of C can be determined. Yeah, so going back to this example, let's say uh, somebody said, oh, well, we know that this person has to have been um, five feet and a half. Do we really know at that point in time? What if they didn't measure? What if they didn't measure when they were five, five and a half feet, but they knew they went from five feet to six feet? We can't guarantee that we know when they were five feet and a half. We don't know if they were 13, 14, or 15. We just know that they had to reach that height at some point in time. So it is an existence, existence theorem. It doesn't guarantee a particular value. Okay, so let's actually look at an example here. We have f of x equals cosine squared of x minus 2 sine of x over 4. Does this have an x-intercept on the interval 0 to 2? Well, you might think, well, how can we use the intermediate value theorem here? Well, this is an existence theorem, intermediate value theorem, and this question is asking for the existence of an x-intercept. What do we need in order for the intermediate value theorem to work? We need a horizontal interval, and we need a vertical interval. Well, fortunately, we have, since we have x values, we can plug them into the function to figure out the corresponding y values. The first step is to make sure you have a horizontal interval. In this case, it's from 0 to 2. Step two is to determine the vertical interval. So just plug in your first value, which we call a, f of zero. Cosine squared of zero is going to give you one. Sine of zero is zero. So f of zero is going to be equal to one. Okay, now f of b. f of uh, b would just be f of two. I used my calculator to approximate this, make sure it's in radians. And I got negative 0 0.786. Now notice. For one value, you get one. For the other, we got negative 0.786. What is in between these two values is zero. And that's important because when we're finding an x-intercept, we know that for an x-intercept, y is equal to zero. So we can guarantee that there's an x-intercept in between these two values because an x-intercept is when y is zero. So this is where the intermediate value theorem applies. Step three, use the intermediate value theorem. Since y is equal to zero and it's in between f of, um, it's in between, let's make sure, f of b and f of a. Now, you know, f of a doesn't have to come first. You can put f of b first. We just want to make sure that our value is between those. So since zero is in between f of b and f of a, we know there must be a y-intercept between uh, somewhere on zero to two. Remember, a was 0 and b was 2. We know there must be a y-intercept there between its, since it's between 1 and negative 0.786. Okay, so since 0, which represents the y-value of the x-intercept, is between f of a and f of b, then the intermediate value theorem guarantees there is an x-intercept for this particular function on a, b, on a, b, specifically 0 to 2. So there must be a y-intercept for this function between 0 and 2. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what the graph looks like. Okay, so here we have our function cosine squared x minus 2 sine of x over 4. In case you can't see it, there it is right there. Here's our function. And what we notice is that between um, those two y values we found, I want to go back and see what those were real quick. Oh, actually, it'll give it to us if we click on it. All right, the first y value we found was negative 0.81. The second one we found was 1. We can see that y equals 0 somewhere between these two. So you can see that. The way this intermediate value theorem works is the interval was from 0 to 2. We asked, does it have an x-intercept? So we pick the y value 0. 
we go over here, it does guarantee a particular X value. Uh, in this case, it's 0.859, but like we said, this is an existence theorem. We don't know exactly what it is. We just know that it exists. And here we can see visually that, yes, if you pick Y equals zero, there is a corresponding X value on this graph. In this case, it's 0.859. Okay, so that's it for the intermediate value theorem. It is an existence theorem. Uh, if you have any other questions about the intermediate value theorem, let me know.